Crimavidia's Mining Weekly is interviewing Brian Prothero, the author of the book Combro's Legacy, and a person who has spent many research and development years at the South African mining industry's now defunct Combro, a former mining and research development top spot. Brian Prothero's book is part of a special publication series of mining research and development. Combro was the South African mining industry's mining research and development organization. Today, Mining Weekly would like to take the first step towards sourcing important information gathered by Comro, looking at the water situation and how hydropower can help South African mining industry, what the vision was when you people studied this hydropower actually evolved over a, a period of time as research took place. So when, when the industry first started, they, they introduced rock drills and that created problems in the early 1920s with uh, dust and um, the, the illness, silicosis. So, so what actually happened is they brought in ventilation as a means to get rid of the dust and actually extract the toxic gases after the explosions of using uh, nitroglycerine and such like to drill and blast. So over a period of time, it actually evolved to where it was realized that uh, for cooling a mine, it was better to use water. So in the 1970s, they had evolved to putting fans underground. Then the fans actually went onto surface and they realized that uh, actually with time that they had to refrigerate the air as well to cool the mines. So big refrigeration plants were put on surface. But the problem evolved uh, and it was identified in the early 1970s that uh, when you put uh, air down a shaft, you get auto co compression. So like a bicycle pump, when you pump up uh, a tire, the pump gets hot. So similarly with air, when you put it down a shaft, it increases in temperature. So the cold air which was being produced on surface was getting so hot by the time it got to the workings that it wasn't cooling. So the object was that air would be used for cooling and providing fresh air for the workers, oxygen basically. So air was pulled down the mine to cool it and provide the fresh air, also to get rid of the, the explosive gases produced after the drill and blast method when they blew up the, the working face, for instance. So the mines had to come out. So Austin Willier realized that um, the mines were using water for drilling anyway, for dust suppression. And over the years, they had evolved the water to uh, a complex. It was an integral part of mining. So water, ventilation were all integral. So you had a, a complex water system in use in the 1970s. And um, for every ton of rock mined, you used a ton or two tons of water, for instance, to drill, provide efficient drilling. So um, Austin Willier decided, uh, realized that water had a specific heat four times that of air. So one kilogram of water absorbed four times the heat that air could. So water was more efficient than air for cooling. Then they did an experiment in the 70s on three gold mines where they showed that actually putting chilled water down and using heat exchangers, you, you could cool the water to a temperature which was uh, suitable for working. So that's how they started using water for actually cooling the mine. And then they, they started using water for powering machines. A two kilometer pipe from surface gives you 20 MPA, which is 200 bar. 
which is uh, uh, enough power for driving a machine. There's information about how water could be an alternative power source. All there are methods for using it as an alternative power source and there are methods for treating it. So there's a lot of information available and it hasn't been disseminated to the industry and made people, modern engineers, aware what has happened. And we know gold exists at five kilometres. Would we be able to mine that gold that's so deep and maybe have a different way of getting down to that gold, miniaturise it even? Yes, I think it's open. It's, it's a, a, a new approach away from the conventional a drill and blast approach. It is very possible that we could rethink it. You know, the gold price is good again. We know there's gold under there. Couldn't we start really, in your view, putting our mind to this? It's $2,300. I mean, it's the highest it's ever been. <laughs> Generally, the gold grade exists. They do believe it's down five kilometers you could mine, but the rock temperature is high. But we use uh, we used ice. They are big ice plants underground. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly, interviewing Brian Prothero, the author of Comrose Legacy.